This is a Podco original. Hello, Full House Rewind fans. Want to see more? Go over to Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts and hit that follow button. That's right. That would be music to my ears, kind of like follow, 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 button. They asked me to do the first episode of Fuller House. So they didn't say, we want you to come back for the series. We just No, no, no. That night after the table read, I got an email from Jeff and he said, um, hey, you were really funny at the table read today. He goes, if it's cool with you, I'm going to get rid of that stuff about your wife and kid. Maybe we can bring you back someday. You could try to date DJ. I'm standing there in the bleachers mm -hmm. and they're finishing the sets. You know, they always say you can never go back home again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we're back home. What do you like better, acting or writing? You know, it's funny because my son asked me during Fuller House, he said, so what are you going to do when the show's over? I said, I guess when Fuller House ends, I'm going to go back to my regular job t writing TV shows. And he goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 20 of Full House Rewind. I'm your host, Dave Coulier. And returning to our show, our guest today is a talented actor, writer, producer, and yes, he's still the voice of Aladdin. He also graduated from Harvard University. Mm -hmm. But you probably know him as Steve Hale from Full House and Fuller House, and DJ's upset. Here's a pic of Scott when Full House was on the air. Thanks for coming back on the show. My pleasure. I could be that guy's grandpa now, I think. You think so? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got the same kind of hair. So it's in, it's in the genes. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about episode 20, also known as the seventh month itch, mm -hmm. part two. Episode 20 was directed by uh, Russ Petranto. And I asked mm. Jeff Franklin, do you remember Russ Petranto? Yeah. And I can't, I, none of us could recall hmm. me, between me and John and Jeff. And, yeah. and so we were trying to figure that out. Uh, it first aired on ABC March 18th, 1988. And uh, Scott, you're going to give us a little rundown on what happens here in uh, episode 20. So Okay. So it's the girls devise a scheme to bring their Uncle Jesse home after he leaves the house to find some privacy. And now we're going to describe what's happening in the episode together. Okay. okay? By right, the way, so, gr yes. another great episode. Another great this episode. This is my second time on your podcast, and I've yes. been really lucky. I've had two great episodes to talk about. <laughs> Now, did you watch these? Yeah, I did. Oh, see, I super did. See, you're doing that acting thing where they tell you just, you know, if just you, say yes. Just say yes. No, I. Not only did I watch, I like okay, like this one, <laughs> which I watched right before I came here. Um, so Jesse uh, runs away. Well, we're gonna get there, but we're gonna I, get there. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about it because it had some fun things. Okay, I'm gonna start us off then okay. on episode 20. Okay, it opens with a recap of part one, of course. Then Danny tells the girls that Uncle Jesse has gone on a little vacation. Mm -hmm. Then Joey tries to make up a story that Jesse went to the desert. <laughs> so in the next scene, we find Joey's making breakfast for the family. His pancakes are awful. Just then the phone rings, and it's Jesse who says that he's skiing in Tahoe and hanging out with his buddies. And then back in the house, Danny tries to give DJ a guitar lesson. So she insists that she's always, she always gets her lessons from Uncle Jesse. And the, car, the, the guitar lesson just doesn't go well, and Danny and DJ have a heart-to-heart -heart about Jesse leaving. Bob's guitar playing is great in that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would love you for saying that. It's true. Yes, because he <laughs> always wanted to be a rock star. I think. <laughs> Danny plays a horrible rendition of an Elvis song, and the scene ends. Meanwhile, back in the girls' room, Michelle helps Stephanie move into Jesse's room. DJ enters, and the girls devise a plan to get Jesse to come back home. And then Jesse enters the ski cabin and his friends tell him that Michelle is sick. Jesse tries to have a good time as he relives a montage of heartfelt moments with Michelle and the Tanner family. And then Jesse calls home and decides that Michelle needs him and returns home. You know, an impressive thing about that was how mm. they had, a, it was only the 13th episode or the 20th episode of the whole series, Yes, but they had enough material for a whole montage. I was like a lot of sweet moments with Jesse. Well, they did because, you know, you had to bribe Mary Kate and Ashley with gummy bears. <laughs> so they went through 15,000 packages of gummy bears to get. <laughs> but they had a lot. They did. Yes, they did. Okay, so now back at the house, mm -hmm. Joey and Danny are playing basketball in the living room as Jesse enters. He learns that Michelle isn't really sick. 
Joey and Danny explain to Jesse how much he's gained by moving into the house and how important he is to the girls. Jesse tells the guys that the family fills the space in his heart that he didn't realize. Jesse goes upstairs and finds Stephanie in his bed. DJ enters, and Jesse explains that for now, he's coming back home. Jesse goes to Michelle's room and gives her a teddy bear. He shares a, a warm-hearted scene with Michelle, and the show ends with Jesse hugging Michelle. As it often oh, did. man. Hey, you speak French, don't you? May we? Oui. Did you learn that at Harvard? Yeah. <laughs> you went to Harvard. Harvard. You know what? I'm, I'm surprised so, it took this long to mention it in the podcast. Well, you used to, you used to call it a drop in the H-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> drop, in the H -bomb. drop in the H bomb. Yeah. You remember that? Yep. And, like, and, <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was you or me. Like, how long does it take it be before when you meet somebody before you drop the H bomb? Yeah, it's true. You have to artfully work it into the conversation because you say things like, "When I was in college in Boston, things like that." And yeah. Then Where did you go? B U yep. B C. <laughs> there was no, there was a tell. writer that I worked with who always made fun of me for talking about it a lot, which I super didn't talk about it a lot. But if you mention it once. Then that's it. Then yeah. Oh, he all he does is talk about it. And so okay. the, they, they they had an ad, they have a credit card. There's a Harvard <laughs> like Mastercard, and it's like a great way of like if you're on a date and you want to you know you haven't mentioned it the whole meal. Uh, so you're like I got this. I'll put it on my Harvard card. <laughs> so I, <laughs> and I sent that to her. But anyway, but um, yeah, it it's funny because it's been a long time. I mean, I I mean it was like I was like there around the time of the school's founding. <laughs> Did you have a long beard and a, yeah, exactly. and a steeplechase hat? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Pilgrim shoes. So did you, wait, uh, so did you study French at, at Harvard? Yeah, so what, what happened was... Because I know it, you went to France. Did I you went study to France. I, yeah, I, well, you know what? I, it was the weirdest thing. I, didn't, I had no interest in France or French culture or Paris or anything, but I had a girlfriend who did at the time. And she was like obsessed with. But you Paris. ate fries, right? I loved fries oh, okay. and I ate French onion soup from time to time, <laughs> and and French uh, the French pavilion at Epcot. Oh, of but, course, uh, yes. But so this girlfriend of mine was desperate to go to Paris for spring break, so we went to Paris. I didn't, and you know, I was like, cool, I'm going away with my girlfriend, not complaining. And but it was a weird thing happened where as soon as I went there, I just like fell in love. Like on that first day. I was like hit by the thunderbolt. And like I said to myself, when I, it was the year before I started college. I was like, when I go to college, I'm going to learn how to speak French and I'm going to live here someday. It's still a very big part of my life. You know, I like, I make a point of, cause it's like a use it or lose it thing. Yeah. So I like listen to French podcasts, like pretty much every day. Like I try to get my news from French podcasts and stuff. Yeah. And now I, my mom's side of the family is all from French speaking Canada. Yeah, you speak French. From uh, I I understand it better than like use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. I understand it really well. So if I'm around people who are speaking French, mm -hmm. I can understand the conversation. Yeah. But to kind of regurgitate it and you know throw it back out there, I have to really think about passé composé and accent grave and yeah, you know, all, all the all different the, tenses. Yeah, and... all the verb tenses. It just kind of screws me up at this point. But I'm thank goodness I'm around hockey players, and a lot of them are from you know, French speaking Canada. But yeah, oh yeah. my grandparents, Norman and Etta Como mm -hmm. from Bathurst, New Brunswick, Canada. Mm -hmm. Uh my grandfather didn't say we, oui, he said we. Eh? Oh very it's very oui. Canadian. Oui. Although the kids say that. You, oui. Oui. It's like cool. It's like yeah. a cool it's like saying yeah. What, what did you study? What was your major at Harvard? So my major was English. Like I was I like uh because you didn't know how to speak? Yeah, because that, that was my, I was like, <laughs> when I, two things. When I go to Harvard, I'm going to learn how to speak French and English. And, but, um, you know, my I was obsessed with the movie Dead Poets Society. Like, I uh, love Dead Poets Society, and it got me super into English and America, like, into literature. And so when I went there, I was like, I, I, I got a Brooks Brothers charge card and a pea coat. I wanted to be like a kid from Dead Poets Society. And, um, and, and so I studied literature by the time I got like super good at French, it was too late to switch majors. Like, cause there was, they had a <laughs> literature major where you could pick a language and, but I was not advanced enough, like to get there in time, you know, but by my senior year, I did a semester abroad in Paris and my French was really good at that point. Cause Harvard can teach you French better than most of the other universities. Oh yeah. Can it you imagine trying to learn French at Yale? <laughs> <laughs> or Princeton. <laughs> so beneath me. So, so okay, so now you graduate from Harvard, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole world's open to you. You've got a degree in English, and you can speak French. So did you, how did you, so how did you? When you say it like that, I feel like such a failure. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to rip up this Harvard 
charge yeah, card. Go back into uh, show business. So, so how did you gravitate towards back back to show business? Well, you know, it's funny. I didn't even think about it. It was sort of like like a robot. I would just like I went back to Hollywood, and I like I didn't even have like a plan. I, it, it was almost like I was like retired. Like I described like those first couple years out, out of college. Of I was like Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm, <laughs> just sort of like aimlessly wandering around, getting myself into trouble and stuff. And uh, you know, I, but I I always knew I wanted to like try writing. Um, and so I finally like got serious and buckled down and started writing a couple of like spec episodes of TV shows. And, um, and in fact, I think one of the first ones I ever wrote was for Bob's show that he did called Raising Dad. Oh yeah, right. And I was like, if, and I like sent it to Bob and he raved about it. He was so genuinely like thought it was good. Right. He left me this like long gushing voicemail that I saved. I still have to this day. And, uh, it meant so much to me. It sort of like inspired me to keep trying and keep going. And I remember then I wrote like a Scrubs spec. Right. And I gave it to a director that I knew. Anyway, it, I got into writing in a very weird way, with like, which is that I did it the traditional way. Like I became an assistant, like a writer's assistant on a show right. and got promoted to finally being a writer and uh, rose up through the ranks. So then so then where where were you you so you were on staff somewhere? Yeah. So what was the first show you were on so staff? So the for? first um the first my first the first show I ever worked on in the writing room was called Like Family. It was a WB show. And then I went over to for my first staff writing job was on a show called What I Like About You with Amanda Bynes and oh, Jenny yeah, Garth. Yeah. And that was my first like regular writing gig. And then I was really lucky like from there it's sort of like I just worked very consistently on like dramas and comedies and just um I you know the first time I actually ever took a break was when we started doing Fuller House and then I had to make this really like gut-wrenching decision to like not be on a writing staff for a while you know right and I continued to write I, I sold pilots every year we did Fuller House and mm -hmm. I would so I'd be up in my dressing room writing a, a pitch or a pilot script um but uh it's been a really good. It's been a really good run, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, let's let's talk about a little bit about the full house here. Did did sure. Jeff Franklin just call you and say, "Hey, Scott, you know we're getting the band back together. Do you want to do Fuller House? I mean, you know, uh, do you uh, want to come back and play Steve Hale?" It's a really funny. So basically, I was writing on this show at the time called Gallivant, which was like a musical on ABC. It was mm -hmm. like a comedy musical, yeah. and and uh, it wasn't a streaming show. It was a network show, but because we shot it in England and it was a musical. It wasn't written like a traditional sitcom where we would have to write the episode and send it off to England for them to shoot it. So there wasn't really much to do <laughs> right. when the writers were, right. once we were done, we were You're just not sort of, punching up in the writers. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to call you from nine hours ahead and be like, this joke isn't working. We need a new end of the scene or whatever. And so uh, I was sort of hanging around and they asked me to do the first episode of Fuller House. And I didn't even understand what it like a sitcom so they didn't on Netflix. Say, so they didn't say we want you to come back for the series. We just no, want no, you no. To one I was just asked to do that one. They called it the reunion episode. It was like the pilot episode where there's right. a party at DJ's house, and they were going to bring back the legacy cast, which was right. remember they called because that was a polite way of saying the old people. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like legacy. <laughs> I know. Come on, like, but, you know how and, about experience? But I, so and you know it was yeah. it was funny because they asked me to just be in that one episode and in the original pilot script for Fuller House, um, I show up at the party. And they, oh, there's DJ's old boyfriend Steve, and DJ says, "How are the wife and kids?" And I'm like, "Oh, they're great. Sorry they couldn't make it to the party." <laughs> right. And at, that night after the table read, I got an email from Jeff, and he said, um, "Hey, you were really funny at the table read today. I think I'm going to get rid of that stuff about your." He goes, "If it's cool with you, I'm going to get rid of that stuff about your wife and kid. Maybe we can bring you back someday. You could try to date DJ." I don't know if he said date, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll, that would be great." I, you know, I, I never thought it was actually going to happen. Yeah, I, I never knew that story. Yeah, it, it was just supposed to be one and done. And I, you know, we've talked about this before. How I suck at auditions. I suck at high stakes situations <laughs> in general. I'm like right. the opposite of Tiger Woods. You know how like when the pressure's on, he gets better. <laughs> I'm like, if the pressure's on, I fall to pieces. So. Um, it was a very low stakes table read because I, I knew it was just the only one I was right. ever going to be in. And I think as a result, I was like funnier at the table read than I had any right to be. It's, it's like Aladdin. Exactly. I just thought it was going to be a little tiny cartoon. If I think it's no big deal. I, I remember I had this audition once uh, for this commercial on the way to the, it was literally like, we didn't have time. We were on the way, I was on the way to the airport, but I swung by to do this audition and I ended up getting it. And it was like this life changing, like mega series of commercials, you know, Whenever the stakes are low, that's when I shine. And so I did. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. Something's going to happen from you being on this show. 
<laughs> That's how low the stakes no, are. No, no, I'm very so nervous. So something, you're going to be plucked by Spielberg. To be like, he's uh, watching this going. Yes. For, for that new podcasting movie I wanted to do, that epic podcast. Absolutely. Podca I'm bringing, uh, oh man. I, we'll yeah, I whole, wouldn't have thought of him, but he's my guy. The movie's called DJ's Upset. <laughs> <laughs> but man, what an adventure. Do you remember that first, that first week we were on the set of Fuller House and it was like, the it same was, set and the same yeah that, yeah let's talk about that because did it did it it didn't really seem that different to me it, well, I, I that's remember what was so weird about it I remember seeing the set I cried I came back to uh, just check out the set like mm -hmm. we we're gonna start in about a week or so and I went back and I'm standing there in the bleachers mm -hmm. and uh, they're doing all the set finishing the sets and I was just by myself standing there. And I thought, you know, they always say you can never go back home again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we're back home. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, because we really were kind of the one of the first sitcoms to come back. Yeah. You know, it started a trend, but it, we were one of the first. It really did, but we were one of the first. And I remember I got so emotional, I just started crying. Oh my and I, god! I sat there going, "Wow, there's our house." Yeah. You, you know, know what I described it? It was like being back in your somehow magically back in your childhood bedroom that you could never go back to, and you're just yeah. and it feels exactly. like a dream. The weirdest thing about it was that the first day felt like a dream. We were like bumping into the furniture, and then it got even weirder the second day when it was just like, "Oh hey," <laughs> it was like. We're back home. Five years hadn't. Passed. It seemed like nothing yeah. had changed. The process really hadn't changed. And you know, they knew the audience felt the same way. That's why the promos in the very beginning didn't have any dialogue or anything. It was just pictures of the set. I know because they knew the audience would have that same feeling, and they well, did. the famous couch, you yeah, know, and like the, the material that you yeah, know, I that love it. Chair, you yeah. know, it's just like you yeah, know, I get the chills so just thinking about it. I think because that's why it was such a massive hit when it came out. I mean, you know. It's funny now because we just take it for granted that it was this massive hit. But at the time, it made no sense like to do a old-timey, old-fashioned traditional sitcom on Netflix and all this stuff. You know, it was like a strange thing to try out. And I had no idea if it was going to be successful. But it, it came out, I guess, on a Friday. Yes. And, yeah. and it had such a huge audience and nobody was ready for it that when the ratings came out for regular television – they were like, where is everybody? Like yeah. they thought something was broken. Like the ABC, yeah. which had all of the sort of family shows on Friday yeah. night, had like the ratings inexplicably disappeared and they didn't know where. Every, and then they realized it was like the gravitational pull of Fuller here's, House. Here's the caveat to that. ABC passed on the show. Dogging. That's yeah, crazy. No, they passed. That's crazy. Yeah. And then we received an award several seasons later and mm -hmm. the award show was broadcast at ABC. Oh my I God. I thought, oh this boy. This is weird. Yeah. yeah, this was really weird. So now you're there's um, always stories like that. I I know I know yeah. showbiz. It's it's just such a thing. So now so you're producing now, right? Yeah, well, writing mainly. I mean, yeah, writing and producing TV. But shows. you're a writer producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a new show that I'm working Hot on. Shot. You're a big deal. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I don't even have time to be here. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Is that for me? Uh, yeah. But I. <laughs> what What do you like better, acting or writing? You know, it's funny because my. My son asked me during Fuller House, he said, so what are you going to do when the show's over? And because he wasn't just, he didn't think it was a cool job. He just like loved the show too. I said, I guess when Fuller House ends, I'm going to go back to my regular job t writing TV shows. And he goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I said, what do you uh, mean? And he was little. He was probably 10 years old. He goes, writing for, he goes, acting seems way funner. And, uh, uh, and it is, I have, I mean, being an actor on a successful sitcom is about the best job you could ever have best, in it's, life. It's the best yeah. job. And you know, but I, I, the only thing that sucks about it is getting the job. You know what I mean? When you're yeah. like working on a TV show, it's great, but like going out there and hustling and auditioning and trying to get your next hit sitcom job is a, is torture. Well, and you know, when you are a successful actor, uh, it, kind of, you know, pushes you in a direction where you get to do really successful podcasts like Full House Rewind. Totally. Yeah, that's you know? the that's the dream. Hey, you want to play a little game with us? Yeah. You ready? You up for that? All right. Um what uh they say hindsight is uh 2020. Uh, whatever that means, I really I have no idea what that means. Um but this is a game we're going to call 2020 where we look back at what happened in episode 20. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions and we're going to see how many you get correct but 
I'm going to guarantee that you probably are going to win a prize. I hope so. Okay. I, feel, I feel like the odds are in my are favor. You? But I just <laughs> watched the episode. It's great. My favorite thing about episode 20 yeah. is when they cut to like Jesse living his dream life in Lake Tahoe with all yeah. his rocker friends. They're just like all playing music and being groovy. Yeah. It's like a 70s thing. I think it was like, I think they played Boys Are Back or something. Yeah, back Boys Are Back in town. <laughs> and he can't get through it. He's, yeah. Because there's a montage coming. Yep. He's thinking yeah. about Michelle. Gonna need a montage. Okay. Here's, <laughs> here's a question one here in 2020. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the back of Jesse's bedroom door, does he have a poster of Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., or Elvis Presley? I feel like it's got to be Elvis. Ding, 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 oh. ding, 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 ding. Okay, you move on to question two. Whew. All right, Joey makes up a story about Jesse's whereabouts in this episode. Mm -hmm. Does he tell the girls that Jesse is in Vegas, Atlantic City, or the desert? I think he says he's, he's in the desert. Yes, because you heard that earlier in the show. Oh, yeah. Ding, ding, we ding. We talked about it. You were actually paying attention. You get bonus points for that. Okay, but however, Jesse is not in the desert. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did he run away to Graceland, New York, or Lake Tahoe? Lake Tahoe. Because you watched the episode. Yeah. That's and he, what and I he goes skiing and he and he, and talks he plays boys are back. And yeah. He, yeah. He's I like there, there was a good them. line when he says, um, because it's such a pain to go skiing, and people who don't ski always feel this way with all the equipment and it's yeah. cold. He goes, Can we just somebody just break my leg and let me sit by the fire? <laughs> <laughs> you just skip to that part. That's right. Cut out the middleman. Yeah, exactly. You? Okay, here's question four. Jesse and his friends launch into a song by the group Thin Lizzy. Is the song Boys Will Be Boys, Lonely Boy, or The Boys Are Back in Town? The Boys. Are back in ding, town. Ding, the ding, ding. The boys are back in town. And That's he was right. waving that yeah. mullet around, oh, that long hair. Yeah, that mullet it could uh, that mullet could sever an arm if he turned really fast. <laughs> By uh, the time I was on Full House, that was gone. Yeah. 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 Mullets were, uh, yeah, but we get to see them in syndication forever. Yeah, they live and on. Streaming and streaming and wherever else. Uh, um, here's question five. Another song gets featured during the montage scene called Baby Love. Okay. Yes. It was recorded by a super group that came out of Motown. Was it the Supremes, the Temptations, or the Jackson Five? A, the Supremes. Ding, 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 ding. And, Everyone's a winner. And, and oh. You know, I've been producing yes. TV shows for a long time because my <laughs> first thought was that's an expensive needle drop. <laughs> well, I, don't I know told if it you you're going to win then. a prize. Look at this. Woohoo! You go away with a matching cut it out t shirt and hat. Thank you so that much. That may or may not fit you. Why wouldn't it fit? Um, because we just give them away. Oh, okay. So we don't know. We don't check the extra, sizes extra or anything. Small. No, that's yes. perfect. There. <laughs> <laughs> you can exchange it in our large inventory back there. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Absolutely. I love it. You can wear that sideways or backwards or however you I'll want. Wear, I'm gonna wear yeah. it and, and any way I want. Okay, now we, thank you uh, so much. We get to do one more thing before we say goodbye. Okay. Yes. By the way, it's amazing whenever you do in your public and you do the cut it out, people lose their minds. I don't. Yeah, and I, it's uh, yeah, it really stuck. Yeah. It has a <laughs> stickiness to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's it's time for cut it out. Oh. Cut it out. Every uh, episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene, so we uh, have cut out a scene here in episode twenty. We're gonna read it together, Scott. This is uh, awesome. Play there you DJ. go. Uh, I'm always I always play Danny. I always play Danny. So you're gonna be playing the role of DJ. Okay. Maybe she'll be upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. It's Danny and DJ, and they talk in the girls' room. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> All of Uncle Jesse's clothes are gone. Is Uncle Jesse thinking about moving out? The truth? Yes. I hate this. When Mom died, I never thought I'd like living in this house again. And Uncle Jesse and Joey moved in and things got better. I don't want anything to change. Aw, oh, honey. I want him to stay as much as you do. Then why don't you get him back? Hey, because he's an adult. You, you just can't go pick him up and put him under your arm and bring him back home. Right now, he's, he's struggling with some things. Man. You know, when, if, you know, the time is right, he'll be back, okay? It's not okay. But... Okay. Oh, and the scenes <laughs> ends right there. And thank you, Scott Weinger. Let's hear it for Dave, Scott Weinger. Thanks thank for you being for here. having me. I, I love, love your you show. so much. Right back at you. I thank love hanging you. out with you. Thank you, Scott Weinger, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Here's some of my observations about episode 20. Now, part two of episode 20 was directed by Russ Petronto. 
when I saw his name come up in the opening titles, I couldn't remember who this was. I immediately texted John Stamos and Jeff Franklin asking if they remembered him. They both said no. So Russ Petronto, or if you're a friend, coworker, or family member, please contact us at socials at podco.us. We'd, we'd love to solve this mystery. Okay, this episode reminded me of the phrase, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Normally, you know, that refers to leaving a loved one makes them miss you more. But here, Jesse's leaving also made him realize he cared more about us than being able to go have a good time. He learned you don't know what you've got until you've lost it. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, but that's pretty much what I picked up on. We'd love to hear your thoughts about Full House. So, you know, tell us your favorite episode or just why you love the show so much. Or maybe you've got a question for me. Who knows? Uh, just send us an email with the link at socials at podco.us. We close every episode of Full House Rewind by giving all of you a hug who need it. This week, our hug goes out to all those who are missing someone right now. When you miss someone, you see just how much space they take up in your heart. And if you're not able to see them soon or ever again, that feeling can be pretty overwhelming. So for all of you who are missing a loved one today, here's your full house hug from me. All right, here we go. Bring it in. <laughs> yeah. That's our show. We'd like to thank our special guest, Scott Weinger, for stopping by. And join us here next time on Full House Rewind. You can watch all of our episodes on our Full House Rewind YouTube channel. So long, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. We'll see you next week.